computer. Okay, so I'm, I'm so excited that I have a couple of people with me today in real time. And, and it looks like some people have been watching the meditations at your own convenience. So um, I'm hoping that this can be helpful. And this is a total experience, an experiment this evening, evening my time, morning your time. I thought that we might meditate on the sphere of Malchut, kingship. And how we're going to get there, we're going to start as I usually start by doing some mind-body connecting. And, um, and then we're going to, uh, and, then, and then I'll share some main ideas about Malchut that I got from an article that I found on Chabad.org. So let's get started. So let's notice... Notice the breath. Take a, either close your eyes or find a focus point. And usually when we start to transition from whatever we do every day to doing a meditation practice, we usually find that we have a busy mind. So you can notice your busy mind and invite the busy mind to take a break or maybe join us. And I like to ask my busy mind to find the couch next to me and maybe cuddle up under my weighted blanket. And then every time my busy mind comes and inserts herself, I just say, that's okay, you can go relax, I got this. So breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. And as you breathe in, you can straighten the or lengthen the spine and kind of make yourself lighter. And then as you breathe out, you can ground yourself down the spine down your legs into the floor. And if you find that it's hard to sit still, it's absolutely fine to walk around or to stand, or even I like to lie down because that way it's easier for me to feel my breath and to feel my sensations. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. And if you want, you can use the word malchut as a, as a focus. And just visualizing the letters of mem, lamed, chaf. Vav, Tav, Malchut. As you breathe in and as you breathe out. Let's just take a moment to notice the breath and notice if the busy mind is starting to settle down or maybe still busy. And then we just go from the busy mind back to the breath. And back to the grounding, down the spine, and to the floor. And then you might notice that your body is giving you some signals and sensations, some sensations. For example, my back is feeling something in the middle on the right side. And I'm feeling it, and now my throat is giving me some sensations of a tightness in the throat. And I have some emotions that go with that. As a model, I usually notice a sensation and connect that with a, an emotion. You may find that there are some positive emotions coming up or maybe some pain and physical pain and some difficult emotions coming up. Whatever emotions, whatever sensations, invite them all, they're all welcome. 
to join this practice. And let's shift over and learn a little bit about Mahut. Mahut is a paradox. It's a combination of Hitnasut, which is elevation, and Shiflut, which is lowliness. Just starting with that, what is Hitnasut? When we do our breathing in, we broaden the spine and then we breathe out, we lower. So we could even visualize that as we breathe in, Hitnasut, and as we breathe out, Shifut. And what does that mean, elevation at the same time as lowliness? I think that Davina Melech is the ultimate, the ultimate example of Malchut, and he is the father of Mashiach. So looking at Davina Mel Melech's life, David HaMelech was born to a very, very important family. His father had handsome, tall, beautiful sons. And his father decided that he was going to separate from his wife, his father Yishai. He was the Nasi of the generation. As far as I remember, someone can correct me if I'm wrong. And he told his wife that he was going to take a concubine. The way I heard the story, the concubine invited, or the, the, the maid said to the wife, I don't want to do this. And the wife agreed secretly to fill in for her that night. And the wife became pregnant. And when Ishai found out that his wife was pregnant, he thought that she was unfaithful to him. And the whole time that David Hamelach was young and growing up, his brothers considered him a second-class citizen. And his mother, his, his status as a fully, fully legitimate child was questioned. And that's that aspect of lowest to highest. And I always think about that, how Devin Amalek, he was treated terribly by his brothers. He was treated as, go do this, go do that, go do this, go do that. You read it about it in the Navi. And they were all shocked and surprised when Shmuel, when Shmuel Hanavi chose David as the next one to be king. So let's breathe in. Hit Nasut. David Amelech was very, very great, but he was also someone who had Shiflut. From the youngest age, he was taught that he had to have loneliness because that's how he was treated even though he came from the holiest place of a holy mother and a holy grandmother and a holy great-grandmother. I think Ruth was his great-grandmother, if I have his generations correct. What else do we know about Malchut? Malchut has nothing of her own, and I'm using the feminine because that comes from the Zohar, according to this article. Malchut just takes on and communicates what's before it, before her and after her. 
Malchut is the final, final revelation of divine light and corresponds to the mouth. So let's just take those concepts and maybe you will meditate on the story of David Melech and the Tehillim that he created and the way that he came from a place that was from the lowest and then became the father of Mashiach. And let's just notice that of what that story means to you personally. Lowest to highest. and she flutes. How is that important to each one of our character development now? You may want to reflect on your own talents that Hashem gave you. and how you might be tempted to hide those talents or maybe a part of you wants to suppress those. So it may come naturally to you to have she flute, to have loneliness, but loneliness is not the same as an ebut, as humility. Loneliness means you know you have talents and you know you can use them. You may want to think about someone you know who's a role model for Malkut, who has the ability to communicate and mediate between different forces of different points of view. Those who have paradox paradoxical points of view. Let's again go back to noticing what the body is feeling, noticing if you have a busy mind, inviting that busy mind to maybe give you some ideas or maybe take the couch next to you and relax. Let's back down if there's someone that you know has clear, clear attributes of Malchut, that you can see it. And I know you see this in Eretz Yisrael all the time. You can see it in the most unexpected places. I'm sharing a picture. I think this is in the North, I'm not sure. Of the sun shining down from above to below. And then below there's a reflection that's reflecting from below to above. The reflection is Mahut. Eretz Yisrael is a land that radiates Mahut and that draws personalities that have the qualities of sheet flute and Anibut and and greatness. I remember once when I was in seminary at Nebe Yerushalayim many years ago, it was 1976. I was dropping off some clothes to a Balat Chesed and Sadaka in Mea Sharim or Gula. And 
This woman had a very clean house and a very, very stark house. And she said two things to me that I will never forget. One, she said to me, I am so happy that I don't have a washing machine because I can put my clothes into the into the bowl and wash them by hand and I know exactly how long it will take and it's done when it's done. I don't have to depend on a machine and wait for it to be finished washing the clothes. She radiated light, even though she was a very simple looking woman. And the other thing that she radiated, radiate, radiated was Abba Israel. She showed me a wall of kusotaka, of pushkas, and she said, she gives a coin to each one of those boxes of tzedakah every day, and she has in mind that everybody is connected, even if they're not close to each other. They're all connected. We're all connected. We're all, all part of one whole. That woman radiated Malchut. And I'll always remember her. That was the first time I understood that there was such a thing as a Claudius role, not from my head, but one from my heart. And she gave that through her words to me. So if you want to, you can reflect on that concept of connection that Malchut gives us and communication that Malchut give us, gives us. And this feminine aspect, which is Malchut, is, is feminine. And how that might be a characteristic, a, a mida, an emotion that we can participate in of connecting, especially through the Tehillim of David Melech. Let's reflect on taking it from an individual that you know who radiates malchut. It may be a female or a male individual. Now let's take it to a community that radiates malchut. Perhaps it's a place of learning. Perhaps it's a shear that you go to. Perhaps it's a chevruta that you participate in and that you have awareness that when you're there learning that Torah and with those people or it might be a shul or it might be a community center, it may not be learning, it may be just, just sitting and supporting each other. Let's feel the emotions of how that feels to be connected. And what does that do to your body and what you are feeling? Does your body expand or contract? have been so many connections made, acts of kindness, chesed, tzedakah. It's just overflowing. How can a Kodesh Baruch Hu not see this and bring an end to Galut?
we've been asking that question. A part of me says, a Kodesh Baruch will do it when he's ready. And the other part says, we're ready. And that other part says, it's not in our hands. And I have an argument going on in my parts. I'm not Thai, it's enough. You may notice some of those arguments going on inside the part that says it's not time and the part that says it has to be time. And maybe we can make a little argument or a big argument to go try to our Kodesh Baruch Hu and Shemayim. Not a loud Gishrai, but a heartfelt cry. Go back and see if we missed any of the points about Malchut. Malchut is the final revelation of divine light when everything comes together. When the physical expresses godliness, when the, when the results of a mitzvah are actually felt, and perceived on a physical level. Let's just take a minute or two and reflect on how far we've come, perhaps through technology or perhaps through our mindfulness practices. How much are we able to perceive Gedlichkeit, godliness? And I guess I can tell you this other story that my husband told since we're looking at a picture of the Kotel years ago. My husband was davening down inside in the tunnel. It was very early in the morning. And he had his towels over his head. It was just Allah Tashachar, the beginning of the dawn. And he suddenly felt everything spinning around and around and around and he felt that he could feel he he, he perceived the davening the prayers that were coming all over the world and landing on the spot by the Beit HaMikdash. My husband came out of it and he said oh my goodness I don't know what that was am I going crazy was that real and then soon after, there was an article written by someone who was a well-known reform rabbi who said that he was at the same spot and he experienced that swirling of prayers. God willing, we should all experience perceiving the light as we come into Hanukkah and that the malchut should be something which connects from the highest to the lowest and the lowest to the highest. And let's just take another minute or so and reflect on what that means to you. And what your body is feeling right now And whether your busy mind is still busy or maybe now relaxed. And when you're ready, you can reorient yourself back into the room.
and I'll stop the recording. Thank you.